Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a good day, it is March 2nd, and today I am back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about pretty much our next upcoming storm systems, because within the, uh, about, about a week out, we actually might have a pretty interesting pattern change, um, that could bring a pretty, not, not major, uh, but what we don't, I don't really, we don't really know yet, um, and I'm not going to call it too far out, because models are likely going to change for this. But we do have a potential winter storm about a week out. We're going to be talking about that in today's video. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So Tonight, it's pretty quiet across the U.S. Today was a very windy and cold day for the Northeast. Um, and the West is mainly calm with maybe some showers in this area. Uh, or some snow showers in the higher elevations. And in the Southeast, we do have a storm system uh, below was around right here, not really significant, just bringing a, 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 pretty, a pretty small chance of flooding to like South Georgia, South Alabama, North Florida. Um, and yeah, as we, go till t as we go into tomorrow morning, that moves off uh, the coast, the low does, but we still have the remaining uh, moderate rain across the areas of South Carolina, North Carolina. This is kind of early tomorrow morning, this is around 7 a.m. And then that moves off. And it's, it pretty much clears out in North Carolina, South Carolina by Wednesday late afternoon. Um, we do have some lake effect going in the northeast. And then our next storm system comes into the plains. Uh, well, we go, okay, so Thursday we start to get into a more active pattern. We have a high setting up right here in eastern Idaho. Not a very significant high pressure. Just a 1,024 uh, millibar low, or not, not low high, sorry. Uh, setting up right there. And we have a cold front slam in the northwest. This is Thursday at around 4 p.m. It depends on where you live, though, so let's just say this is Thursday afternoon. Uh, we have a low starting to get going in southwestern Kansas here, uh, bringing some showers to areas of Kansas, Oklahoma, and even some snow, maybe like the areas like Denver, um, and especially the higher elevations of uh, the mountains in Colorado. And that low moves further to the southeast. It doesn't get extremely strong. Um, if this has been trending to a, for, to a more, or the GFS over the past couple days has been trending to a more strong low pressure uh, with this. And then, yeah, we can see by uh, Saturday, it kind of moves into the northern Gulf. Not really a strong low anymore. And then it, it re-strengthens when it hits Florida, brings showers, uh, kind of Saturday morning. Jerry is a Florida, South Georgia, South Alabama. And then it clears out, but remains unsettled throughout the day, throughout the whole day, Saturday, in Central and South Florida. Um, and also, let's, we also do have a lot of remaining cold air in the Northeast. We have a 1,031 high right there, so that's pretty strong, uh, helping to bring in some of that cold air. So we, used to, we do still have cold air remaining. Now, if we had a little bit more, we could maybe have some snow showers, and not, not that far south, sorry, but... Maybe like central North Georgia, maybe southern South Carolina, if we get enough moisture in that area. But we don't have enough cold air for that. Uh, maybe some, though, if we can get showers, maybe some in the higher elevations of the southern Appalachians. And yeah, so this is our next storm system. This is probably going to be our next significant one. Uh, this It comes together around next, like early next week. And... This is Tuesday morning next week. Let's not look at any specific dates, though, yet, because this is still far out. Um, I, I don't want to give any specific dates. So, because the models are likely going to change when this happens. It's most likely it's not, I mean, very likely it's not going to look exactly like this Tuesday morning. It could be further to the south, further to the north, further to the west, and further to the east. We just have to look at model trends. Um, but yeah, so this is Tuesday morning, or not Tuesday morning, sorry, this is just, this is early next week. You can see very windy in the central plains, and the Midwest, of course, pivotal weather is, uh, okay, but, uh, yeah, we have, it's very wind. it's very windy in the plains in the Midwest. Uh, we have a little bit of rain, actually a lot of rain, and there's a South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, like Fargo, and on the backside, we do have just enough cold air for some areas of heavy snow. Now, we don't have a whole lot of it. As you guys can see, we don't have a perfect supply, but if we had a high pressure like right here, that would help the supply some more for us, but we don't have that. But uh, we do have just enough for 
uh, a lot of snow in that area. And in front of this, we have warm, moist air. And then along this cold front, the GFS has been hinting at this for through around since yesterday. We have a second low form. Now, this could maybe enhance our severe weather potential in the plains. Now, keep in mind, this is pretty far out. So severe weather right now, it's a possibility. It's not 100% likely, though. Um, but definitely something to keep keep an eye on. And yes, we can see this low brings a lot of snow to areas of western North Dakota. Western North Dakota hasn't seen a whole lot of snow this year. So that'd be kind of nice. And then this does look like this This could bring maybe a strong damaging wind uh, squall line. Maybe a tornado throw. We'll have to see. That. And we're going we're gonna to have to see. That's the potential of it. It's definitely there. But where it happens and how bad it is is really uncertain right now. This is around a week out, maybe even a little bit more than a week. Uh, so, yeah, and then it goes into the northeast, but not really too much happens with snow in the northeast. There doesn't some lake effect in the backside. Uh, that's far out, though, so we're not going to really talk about that. Now, let's look at the uh, 500 millibar winds with this. See what the, see where the, uh, the jet is when that storm system comes. So you can see we have a decent looking upper level low moving across the south. Um, which I kind of that's that's with our uh, storm system that kind of moves like this. Um, weekends in the northern Gulf bring some more showers of water. That's kind of late this week into this weekend. And then you can see this is our next one right here. Now this this would definitely have the chance to bring to bring severe weather to the, a large majority of the central U.S., maybe Dixie, maybe this area also. Uh, this is far out, though, so just don't really count on that happening at this point. Now, because, like I said, like I've saying, said a lot of times, this is very, very far out. Not very, very far, but a, re a week out, which is pretty far out to be forecasting severe weather. In my opinion. Now let's go to the European model and see if there's any differences with it. So the European has a storm system a lot further to the south. So this is actually an interesting sign. Maybe something further to the south could happen. Um, which is why I said the storm system is very uncertain. Especially for this area. If they could get a big snowstorm or not. But the European has most of the snow limited to Canada. And... It has a low a lot further to the south. It does have it pretty strong, though, for areas of Kansas going into Illinois. but um, And it could have that severe weather threat there also with it. Um, and now let's check out the Canadian. Let's see what the Canadian is saying. Remember, the Canadian uh, yesterday had a complete different story. It had several weaker storm systems going across the central kind of U.S. Not really, like, not, not this central, but like the Midwest, the Central Plains, and the, even the Mid-Atlantic. Had a pretty zonal pattern also. And then we go to the uh, Canadian. Let's see if it still has that. It does kind of still have that, actually. It has two lows. Um, none of them are that strong, and doesn't really seem to be a perfect uh, severe weather setup, which none of these models are showing a perfect severe weather setup, but the GFS seems to go the hardest of that severe weather threat. Now the uh, yeah the Canadian doesn't exactly show a whole lot of severe weather. Now we we could have, if the Canadian does happen, we could have some like marginal risks. But we're not gonna have a severe any severe weather outbreaks now. It's very uncertain if we're actually gonna have severe weather outbreaks or or, any, or a severe weather outbreak with uh, this upcoming storm system next week. It's very uncertain if we are going to have severe weather outbreaks or a severe weather outbreak with that, sorry. So d don't count on it happening. Just, uh, yeah, and I'll be back tomorrow to talk about that a little bit more. There's not a whole lot to, in, the, in the next, like, five days to be talking about. No big snowstorms, no big severe weather, uh, or no, no severe weather, really, at all. So, uh, yeah, I will be back tomorrow. But, um, yes, thank you guys for watching. Bye.